The fear of roller coasters. Certainly something that has sidelined many of us at theme parks, resigning us to park benches, holding everyone's stuff while they ride the big kahuna. Needless to say, having to sit out of many rides throughout the day can sour any theme park trip. And chances are, if you're watching this, either you or someone you know has a fear of roller coasters, but actively wants to get over it and wants to get in the action. And that's why I'm glad you're here, folks, because guess what? I want you to ride roller coasters too, and I have the silver bullet that can help you do that and get off the park bench and onto these rides. Now, that being said, the fear of roller coasters is a multifaceted fear to tackle because really people aren't afraid of roller coasters themselves, they're afraid of everything that comes with them, right? So you might be afraid of going upside down, you might be afraid of heights, you might be afraid of nausea, and I'll touch on all these later in the video, but really there are two major factors that play into people being afraid of roller coasters. These are the safety of roller coasters and the forces that are put on your body by roller coasters, in particular, that stomach drop feeling that many people find uncomfortable. So let me go ahead and just dash the safety concern right off the bat because that's the easiest one to address. I know through the media and through the news, it might seem like roller coaster accidents happen all the time, but when we take a deeper look into what the news is covering here, 90% of the time, the big roller coaster accident is guests being stuck on the lift hill of a ride for a few hours, which is a completely normal safety procedure that did not involve anyone getting injured or hurt. And yet, for some reason, the news feels the need to report on it, even though obviously there's no real news to discuss here. Why do they do that? Well, it's because roller coaster accidents are so few and far between that they have to talk about non-factors like that in order to actually have anything to say to bring in eyes to their broadcast. To put this in perspective for you, just how rare this is, the odds of you dying on a roller coaster are 1 in 170 million, million folks. Now, maybe that number sounds small to you. Maybe you're saying, oh, well, any chance of dying is too much. Okay, let's run the numbers. Let's say you're the type of person who goes to an amusement park and you sit on the bench, you say, okay, I'm not gonna ride the roller coaster. Consider this, you have to drive to the theme park, right? Uh, well, you have a higher chance of dying on the car ride over. You have a higher chance of dying walking from your car to the park entrance or just walking around the park in general from tripping and falling. You have a higher chance of choking on your lunch that day and dying than dying on a roller coaster. And this is not just by a slight margin. This is by literal millions of percentage points difference between these two things. So listen. If you're at home and you're living inside of a bubble, then yes, please do not ride the roller coaster, okay? That's too much for you. But if you leave your house on a daily basis, then guess what? You're already putting yourself in more danger than you would ever be in on a roller coaster. And the reason for this is because roller coasters have more safety mechanisms and procedures in place than what is even remotely necessary. They have fail safes for fail safes over and over and over again in every single aspect of the ride. The supports have fail safes, the track has fail safes, the brakes have fail safes. Oh, and you know those uh, seat belts they have you put on before you pull down your lap bar or put on your over the shoulder restraint? Guess what? That's a fail safe too. Those seat belts are not doing jack for you on the ride. You might think the seat belt is helping keep you in. No, the seat belt's doing nothing most of the time because the lap bar is really doing all the work. The lap bar is reinforced with hydraulics that are used on airplanes. You're literally not going anywhere but they put the seatbelt there just in case, God forbid that one in 170 million thing were to happen, hey, guess what? The seatbelt's gonna catch you. And you may be saying, okay, well, I understand that the roller coaster was designed with safety in mind and it was designed well, but I don't trust the ride operators, right? The fact there is a human element to this, there's always a chance of them messing up. But the great thing is that technology has advanced so much to where ride op mistakes have been about as minimized as they possibly could be if not straight up eliminated, because the computer will not let ride ops send a vehicle unless a number of prerequisites are met. So even if a ride op hits the go button by accident or on purpose, it doesn't matter. The computer will tell them, no, 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 no. I'm not sending this vehicle until you do X, Y, and Z. And once those things are met, then guess what? You're safe and good to go anyways. 
So here's the thing, folks. If you are afraid of roller coasters because you fear for your physical safety on them, then all I have to say really is stats don't lie. Numbers do not lie, folks. And the fact of the matter is you are safer on a roller coaster than you are in your normal everyday life because they have so many safety checks, procedures, and fail safes in place to make sure that nothing bad happens. However, something that cannot be dispelled or put to bed by a simple fact check is that stomach drop feeling the forces that a roller coaster is putting on your body and how it makes your body feel during the ride this is something that a lot of people struggle to get over and it's something that prevents them from doing the big rides now just to clear things up that stomach dropping feeling is not unnatural it is not abnormal and it is not doing any damage to your body so you have nothing to worry about in that regard However, you might be saying, well, if that's the case, then why do I feel so uncomfortable when that stomach drop feeling occurs? Well, think about it this way, folks. When do you ever experience that stomach dropping sensation outside of theme park rides? Seriously, think about it. How often does that happen in your normal life? Probably not very often, right? Some of the most common occurrences of it are probably when you hit a bump in the road when driving your car at very high speeds, you know, perhaps maybe you get that stomach dropping motion there. Uh, and probably the most common occurrence is realistically turbulence on airplanes, right? Those changes in altitude at a rapid pace often cause that stomach drop feeling. And what you might notice about these two things is that they both are precarious situations. They are abnormal moments in your transportation journey that result in you getting that stomach drop feeling. Meaning that really in your normal everyday life, the only times you ever experience stomach drop is during precarious situations when your body is in danger. Therefore, there's a very good chance that your body and mind has associated that stomach drop feeling with dangerous situations. So even if you know roller coasters are safe, you know that you have nothing to worry about in that regard, your mind is still gonna play tricks on you and make that stomach drop feeling feel very uncomfortable because it associates it with dangerous experiences. So the only way to convince your mind that that stomach drop feeling is not necessarily always a bad thing, and you're not gonna like this, is to ride roller coasters. I know, I know. It's certainly a tall ask, but think about it this way, right? The more roller coasters you ride, and the more you prove to your mind that, hey, that stomach drop feeling is not necessarily always happening during precarious situations, and it's happening during the safe environment and fun environment of a roller coaster. I mean, I wish it was as easy as just telling your mind, hey, uh, stomach drop feeling is not a problem, guys. It's not, it's not something to be worried about, all right? And uh, you know, just flick a switch and all of a sudden it's not uncomfortable anymore. Unfortunately, you have to prove to your mind and body that it's not a problem, right? It's like eating your vegetables. It's gonna suck at first because they taste like buns, but your body's gonna be much healthier going forward because you ate the vegetables, right? It's the same thing. You're gonna ride roller coasters. It's gonna suck a little bit in the beginning because you're gonna feel uncomfortable at some drop, but the more you ride roller coasters, the more comfortable and more used to that feeling your body will become. And then eventually, you may even turn the corner to where your body actually experiences extreme joy from feeling the stomach drop feeling, which I know that might seem unfathomable to you at this moment in time, but most of the people who really like roller coasters actually chase that feeling of stomach drop. But don't get it twisted, folks. I'm not saying get on the biggest, baddest roller coaster at the next theme park you visit and just rip the band-aid off. No, 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 no. Take it easy. Start with the family or junior coaster. I would not start with the kid coaster because usually, honestly, the kid coasters can be kind of janky. So I wouldn't even start with those. I would start with you know, the, the mid-tier family coaster that has mild thrills and then work your way up throughout the day. But even then, there are still more hacks to be had, right? From other people who have had similar experiences to this, who used to be afraid of roller coasters because that stomach drop feeling, their hack basically is, and, and again, you might not like this, is to one, scream your head off, and two, put your hands up. I know, I know, it's, it's, it's an insane thought that I'm not only asking you to ride roller coasters to get over this, but I'm also telling you now to put your hands up. I know, but... From people's own experiences, when you tense up, when you're nervous, when you're hunched over your lap bar, holding on for dear life on these rides, guess what? Your whole body is tensed up. And when your body's tensed up, it's more sensitive to those motions and to that stomach drop feeling, making it much more extreme and a lot more uncomfortable. By screaming, 
you're letting out a lot of that tension. You're distracting your mind a bit by focusing on screaming instead of focusing on that stomach drop feeling. And by having your hands up, again, that's another distraction. And it also helps to stretch out your body. That way it can't be as tensed up. And if you're worried about people looking at you sideways for screaming on a roller coaster, dude, you've been sitting on the park bench, you've been watching these cars come flying by, there's at least one person screaming on every single train. That's a part of the game at amusement parks. Do not feel bad at all for screaming. Go ahead and let it out and you will feel much better on these rides for doing so. And here's the other great thing about it too, folks. Once you train your body and mind to get used to that stomach drop feeling, it's like riding a bike. You never forget how to do it. Your body remembers, oh yeah, this is not a bad feeling to have. Now, maybe you won't feel super comfortable on roller coasters as you get older for other reasons, but that stomach drop feeling will never be a problem going forward once you train your body to be used to it. So let's go ahead and just rapid fire some of the other concerns around roller coasters. Going upside down, listen folks, this is not Jimmy Neutron. You're not gonna get stuck upside down. That is against the laws of physics. It's literally not possible. So not only do you have nothing to worry about there, but also most inversions, which is any time that the ride goes upside down, only last for like a split second. It, they're blinking, you miss it moments. You go through these inversions so quickly that you don't really even notice you're upside down for that often. Now, there are a few rides that have some insane moments of hang time. One of the most notable probably being Velocicoaster at Universal in Orlando. Uh, so stay away from that one if you're concerned about that. But every other ride, these are blinking, you miss it moments. And once you go through and you do it once, you're probably not even going to be afraid of it afterwards. You'll be like, oh, that was it. Not a big deal. If you deal with nausea on roller coasters, if you deal with motion sickness, there's a couple of pieces of advice that I can give you. I mean, for one is don't drink alcohol anytime near when you're going to the theme park. I know maybe a tall task for some of you, <clears throat> but alcohol can make your vestibular system, which is basically responsible for your sense of balance, to be much more sensitive to movement, which of course would result in you becoming much more nauseous on roller coasters than you would otherwise if you did not have alcohol in your system. But regardless if that's an issue for you or not, there are now patches and drugs that you can get that completely desensitize you to motion sickness, which would allow you to experience these rides without having the fear of getting sick. And if you're afraid of heights, well, just don't look down. Check, I'm looking down. No, I'm kidding. I actually do kind of have a fear of heights. I mean, I don't lean over any ledges. I don't hold anything out over a ledge, I, I, you know, I kind of freak out even when someone else is doing that. So, you know, I, I kind of have a fear of heights and yet I have no problem riding roller coasters that are 200, 300, 400 feet up in the air because I know I'm secure. I know I'm locked in, right? There, there's really next to no chance of me flying out of my seat, especially if it's on a lift hill nonetheless. I'm so secure, in fact, that even if I was trying actively to get out of my seat, to jump to my death, it literally would not even allow me to. It'd be damn near impossible to pull that off. So I think once you kind of have that sort of uh, internalized in your mentality, your body will be totally okay with dealing with it, even if you still have that fear of heights in other regards. So now that I've addressed majority of the major fears and concerns around roller coasters, let me leave you with this. If you're still not convinced, if you still think, oh, I can't do it, I, I can't get over this fear, I can't accomplish this, think about it this way. What is one of the greatest things you can do in your life? Period. Period. One of the greatest things you ever do in your life. That's overcome and face a fear. There is no greater reward and there is no better feeling than challenging one of your fears head on and coming out on top. There's no better feeling. So trust me, when you finally do ride that big roller coaster, when you finally accomplish that fear even if you didn't have a great time on it. if you come off saying you know what that's not for me regardless of that you are going to come off feeling like the biggest stud in the world you will have the biggest smile on your face because guess what you did what you thought was impossible you did what your body was telling you that you couldn't accomplish you were doing something that you thought sitting on that bench watching your friends do it you thought could never be you on that ride and now all of a sudden you've pulled it off you are going to feel the most insane rush of dopamine once you finally tackle this fear. I cannot understate that. And to be quite frank, I am envious of you that you get the opportunity to experience that. So congratulations, have fun, and I'll see you 
on a roller coaster. And with that being said, I'll see y'all next time, folks. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any tips or advice or tricks for people to get over their fear of roller coasters, let me know. I love to hear what to say, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.